L's, rejection, losses. You might not be a person's first choice. It's not the be all and end all. L's, rejection, losses, and not being someone's first choice. That's a part of life. If you're on the path to success, fuck it. If you're just living, you're going to be subjected to L's, rejection, losses, and not being a person's first choice. So, like, one time, some months ago, my girl said to me, like, Jay, like, all your, a lot of your YouTube subscribers and that, like, they really think you're rich and that. Like, she's not trying to take nothing from me. And let's just be clear. Man's not rich. Man's just comfortable and stable. And she was like, yeah, you know, uh, a lot of them, man, they think that you're rich or whatever. And she said it herself as well, like, yeah. Everything that you touch turns to gold. I heard her say that a couple of times too. Yeah, those are just the wins, isn't it? Yeah. If you lot think that everything that man touches turns to gold and man's just been on a complete winning streak my whole life, you're sadly mistaken. Man's taken bare L's, bare losses, bare rejections. <laughs> I've not always been someone's first choice. So like even in my younger days and that, if you didn't know, man's a black belt in taekwondo, you know. Hey, started when I was like six and a half, seven, and after about nine years, I got my black belt and that. Obviously, no one starts off as a black belt. I started off like a a white belt, just like everyone else and that. And if you read man's book, um. Described in the book, you know, went through the grading process and that. I think I passed the first two belts easily or whatever in it. Yeah. And I put myself in a false sense of uh, security. Like, yeah, 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 next grading that comes up. Because gradings are periodic. A grading is where you can go for the next belt promotion. So they're periodic. Once every six months or whatever, whatever. So I got a bit slack. And to cut the long story short... My slackness got me rejected. My taekwondo instructor said to me, nah, you're not ready. You ain't worked hard enough. Again, man didn't really take it too personal or whatever. Man didn't take action. Man didn't do nothing about it. I just thought, yeah, yeah, whatever, innit, yeah. Man, I go for the next grade and again, bam, you ain't been working hard enough. I said, all right, cool. Now man understands. Yeah. So I started working hard. I took that rejection, yeah, I didn't bitch up and think, oh, oh fuck this taekwondo thing and leave, no, 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 I took that rejection on the chin, like a man, with the was a boy, took it like a man and said, you know what, I'm going to work hard, what happened next time, went up for promotion, okay, you're legible, went for the grading, passed the grading, because it was embarrassing, you have to check it, so like, I'm a yellow belt at this point, and there's youths that were the same age as man, they pass man, so they are higher belt than man, and then there's youths who are younger than me, who started after me, for example, if I started in 1999, there's youths that started in 2001, and now they're the same belt as man, like I described in my book, it's like the fucking fifth grader sitting in the third grader's class. Man's been held back by it like two years or a year or whatever, isn't it? so it was embarrassing. So man used that rejection, which was my own fault, to get me to really push myself in it. Like I got that driving force on that rejection. So that's like basically like the first time man really experienced rejection in my life when I was like about eight years old or whatever, isn't it? and um, that shit there really stuck with man still. Remember, it was like it was yesterday. My shot telling me, nah, basically, you're not good enough, isn't it? which is good. We need to be told a lot of the time we're not good enough when it's happening. Kick, kick us into gear. Next time I was rejected, the next time I took a loss, like in school, in school, wrote about in man's book. There was some youths in my year. Get me, they used to try rough man up and take man's crisp and drink and that because I used to sell crisp and drinks and that. Happened a few times. And then one day I said, you know what? Because man was a bit timid of these youths. 
Cause man was not on it back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Man was not on it back in the day. I was just a sweet boy. Man used to get bare girls and that, and that, that was about it. Girls and money and that. Yeah, but man was not about this. So there was some mutes in man's year. And literally, I used to be in the playground. And I used to be watching them man there at the corner of my eye. And they literally just sat on this bench like a pack of hungry wolves. Literally. Just waiting for that antelope to, to slip. And you know, these youths come... Black man out, put man's hood over man's head and take man's crisp and that. Done that a few times, whatever, innit? And on the last occasion, like, man put up a good bit of resistance against them, innit? Man didn't swing no punches, don't get it twisted. You don't want them man there to head top, man. But man put up resistance and that. And they still made off with a couple crisp and that. But man slightly earned their man his respect. Next thing you know, man's rolling with them. Next thing you know, the teachers are telling me they think that I'm the ringleader of them. I want the ringleader of them, man, there. But get me, man was rolling with them, man. Man was rolling with them, man. So, taking L's, rejection, losses and that. Might not be people's first choice. It's all a part of growth and that. Talk about sports. There's a lot of footballers out there. Man can't really name any names. But I know I, I know this is a scenario. I know this is real life, innit? Yeah, I know there's some footballers out here. When they was younger... They went for like Man United's youth tryouts. Yeah, they wanted to get on the youth academy for, for Man United. So that man they turned up for the tryouts and that. And I know the managers and the coaches and the scouts probably say, you know what? You're not good enough and that. Dismiss the man. But I know somewhere there's some man in the Premier League who was that guy who got rejected, who got dissed. Dismissed. He's now the top scorer for Chelsea or Arsenal. And I know them scouts, managers, coaches. I know there's probably been a time when they've been out on the field, get me Arsenal's playing Chelsea or get me Man United's playing Tottenham, whatever. And they've seen this particular individual. Again, man can't name any names, but I, 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 I know this has happened before, innit? And that person now is the top scorer in the Premier League. And I know the manager, coach, scout, whoever, remembers that guy. And man's probably standing there on the sideline thinking, well, my man's a top scorer now, you know. Yeah, maybe we should have gave him that chance, innit? Because look how much money he's bringing and rare, rare, rare. Again, business. You lot heard about that vending machine business man started. Obviously, it failed inevitably or whatever. And most businesses that start will fail. Even when man set up the first vending machine at my uni, I spoke to the manager at the uni. He said to me, yeah, 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 bring the vending machine, whatever, whatever. Went to go and finalise the thing with him the second time. Oh, no, no, we don't want it. Nah, nah, we don't want it, whatever, innit? Man didn't take that, that L, that loss, and think, oh, okay, cool. No, 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 man went back there a third time. Man sold him a dream, man begged him, and he said, okay, 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 okay. When you get rejected one time, when you get when you take an L, you know, sometimes you have to go back a second time, you know? What did Elias say? If you first don't succeed, try again. Yeah, remember them bars there. Remember them bars there. My man dismissed my idea the second time. I had to go back there a third time and say, listen, right, 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 right. Obviously, not aggressive or nothing like that, but get me, man, I had to really push this thing in his face, innit? But even after that, um, still continuing the vending machine business, I really wanted to slap some of these people, you know. I used to go into, like, corporate office buildings in, in the city, Marlebone and all these different kind of places and stuff. Uh, not all of the places I approached was obviously corporate uh, offices in um, in the city. I go to youth clubs and that. Uh, man's all gone to like all these little clinic GP practices and stuff. And ninety nine point nine percent of the staff 
uh, at the front desk, they would reject my idea right then and there. It's like, hold on a fucking minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Man went in there to ask for the building manager's email address and the fucking receptionist who has no power is telling me they don't need it or they don't think it's a good idea. Who the fuck are you, blood? Or am I, am I being too harsh or thinking like that? Hold on a minute. <laughs> Whether the office staff, the receptionist, thinks it's a good idea or not, they have no power, they have no say. So man needs to always go in and ask for the building manager's email address. And again, man will even sometimes get the building manager's email address and they will just dismiss my idea in it. But man never stopped. That didn't stop me, you know. Nah, 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 nah. That did not stop me, fam. I remember one time... So this is during this same vending machine business venture or whatever, in it. I was on my bed, to back in my mum's yard, Edmonton, and I was thinking about community centres and that. And prior to that, I'd been to Islington Town Hall, which is near Angel. So anyway, I was thinking about community centres, and I don't know why, but I remember one time I went to one christening. Um, one of my stepdad's people's people had a christening, so I went down. Is it an N1? So anyway, I've gone down to this christening. I'm chatting to one lady, Gina. Black lady, she runs the um, the youth club for the young people. And, that. and these times, man, I was an apprentice. But I was saying to her, like, yeah, I'm an apprentice at the moment, but man's due to complete in about a year's time. She's like, okay, cool. Here's my number. Once you've qualified and you're a fully qualified electrician, phone me and I can get you to come over here and do some work and that. I remember that I still had her number. So a couple years later, I still got a number. I'm lying on my bed thinking about promoting this vending machine business. Found the number, no response or whatever in it. Now tell her like the number didn't even exist no more. She probably don't even use it no more, or whatever in it. So boom, I said, you know, I ain't even gonna take that as a as a rejection or whatever in it. You know what? Man jumped on my bike and I went all the way down to Islington from Edmond. Saturday, you know. Knocked on the door of this community centre. They were running like some daycare thing on a Saturday. Like some child daycare thing on a Saturday. Never heard of that before. Innit? Anyway, boom. Said to one random girl that works there, what's the building manager's uh, email address? Whatever, she gave me two different building manager's email addresses. Sent the same email to both of them. Next thing you know, they gave man an interview. Next thing you know, man's got the vending machine in there. If I thought to myself, ah... Man took that as a rejection or a L, like not just obviously phoning up the woman and she didn't answer or whatever, and it being lazy. Now all the other times when the people them listen, you see the receptionists and them people where they used to go into the uh, the office builders and that they used to smile and smirk in man's face, you know, like man's a fucking madman, you know. I didn't let that deter me. Did not let that deter me. If you want work as a fucking receptionist your whole life, that's up to you, innit? I ain't no fucking worker. I'm not working in the meantime, but I ain't no fucking worker, innit? So if you think my ideas are, are funny or stupid, then that's up to you, innit? That's a res reflection of yourself. That's a reflection of yourself. Again, losses, L's and that. It's all necessary, innit? All necessary on the path to success. Boom. I used to sell these little habitat lights. Again, you know like them little stationary box like at the stationary box and it's got wheels and like a pulley kind of trolley thing. Man used to walk the street, you know, like a madman with a habitat light. Yeah, like a big light, like a light lampshade kind of thing, innit? And I used to walk into places and try and pitch my idea to them and sell it to them, innit? Yeah, like whoever, whatever kind of shop. Man's rolled up in fucking nail shops, you know. I remember there was one girl that man used to try to get onto one time who was in the nail shop getting her nails done. Imagine. A man has rolled up into the nail shop trying to, to sell them Vietnamese people a light in front of a bare girl, you know. She must have looked to her left and looked back and thought, this is the reason why I never gave him my fucking number, for real. Literally, obviously, most of the time, 95% of the time, man used to go into these places, again, community centres and shops and where, where, where and that, and... Again, people used to smirk, laugh in man's face or whatever. And yeah, that didn't stop me. Nah, 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 nah. That didn't stop me. Um, they were constructing one, um, one, one mini market. 
Turkish mini market in Edmonton opposite the jet petrol station, if you know. So anyway, man's rolled up in there. I said, yo, man's got this light or whatever, innit? The manager said to me, yeah, yeah, come back her next time, innit? Yeah, because we're busy at the moment, innit? And next time came, and yeah, next thing I know, a man saying, yeah, 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 bring one light and install it. Then bring two, three, four. Next thing you know, man's installing like six to eight lights in this place. Plus, remember, so I'm, I'm installing six to eight lights in this place. The man has to pay me for the lights, and then the man's paying me to install them as well. And I've got a fucking free kebab. Yeah, free kebab because there's a kebab shop next to it. If you know Jet Petrol Station, Edmonton, uh, Hartford Road, where Hartford Road meets Bouncers Road, there's a, a kebab shop. Yeah, the man gave me the get the man gave me a free kebab. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Like that was yesterday. Still, I remember my older cousin. I think turned thirty or something. This is years ago. My older cousin turned thirty or something like that. Nah, this is more important than socialising and having fun. So that night, man made like £250 that night or something like that. I'd rather make that money than go and socialise. Talk shit with people that man don't talk to on a regular basis. Man don't talk to you on a regular basis, then man don't need to see you. That's, that, that's my mentality. Again, same thing with the Habitat lights. Um... I was near where the community center. So these times, man already installed the vending machine at the community center. And I was walking up and down the road and I was trying to sell my lights again to these shops and that. Went into a Chinese, like one of them Vietnamese people, nail shops. We're not interested, whatever, really. I said, you know what? Let me just go into the community center and speak to the managers. Remember, I already have the vending machine business there. And I already have the vending machine there. Gone in there, showed them the light. It's uh, hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll, um, me and the other manager will talk or whatever. Next thing you know, man's installed three lights in the hallway, then four in the boardroom, then five in the other room. Then I'm their fucking electrician. I, they're sending me to other um, community centers because they got more than one community center that they run. I'm their number one electrician. If I let, ah, oh, these lot might not like that idea, you know. Man would have never made that money. Man would make some good money from them habitat lights, man. Again, when I was on road, obviously this is more of a, a negative thing, but at the end of the day, it's relevant. And man was on this thing when I was on road. But I wasn't always on this thing. Man had to take a big L to actually get in gear, you know? Remember there was some use. Man was on my way to Enfield Town with one of my cousins. And some youth jumped on the bus with red bandanas. Obviously, man used to flag green. I didn't carry on green bandana at the time or whatever, innit? But anyway, next thing you know, get me man's grips in man up and yeah, I felt so disrespected. I felt this big. And then from that day, I turned into a fucking lunatic. I could I lost battles after that. Yeah, but a man was not going down about a fucking fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. trust me. The level of aggression that man reached from taking that L. Turn me into a madman. Literally, turn man into a fucking madman. Don't get to man. I never used to stab no one or nothing like that. Any. But bear man on the road got fisted up. Fist man up. Fist. Bear man. Bear man. The level of aggression. You know why? A man got chiefed up. And I was like, you know what? This is not happening again. This is not happening again. Yeah, I could lose a battle after this. But that's what's going to have to happen. I ain't getting chiefed up. Literally, you're going to have to fuck me up. Because I ain't going down without a fight. Win, lose, or draw. Man ain't taking me for no prick. A lot of the man them that you see on road, the reason why they're bad, the reason why they're OJ, they're really on this thing, because they used to take lots of L's back in the day. I even know someone. I know a man that killed a man. He wasn't about this thing. He was a sweet boy, just a money man. Like a fraud and rare, rare, rare and that. He wasn't a bad boy. But he was getting taxed by an next man And one day, he, he had enough of getting bullied. He had enough of getting taxed. Took too many L's, too many losses. Then he stabbed someone and they died. 
rolled about, I think, 10 to 12 years in jail or whatever, wasn't it? Long time. That's what happens when people get bullied and that, they fight back. And obviously, that's that's something negative, isn't it? I'm just trying to prove a point. Like, you know, when you take L's and that, it brings out something in you. Obviously, my man went too far by putting the man in a coffin, but boy, it is what it is, isn't it? Rejection with gal. It's all going to happen to all of us. Every man that's out here in the field, you're going to get rejected by gal. If a man ever tell you, oh, I've only been rejected on the road, I've only been aired, I've only been this by one or two girls, whatever, it? yeah, that's because they've only ever approached one or two girls. Trust me. Man approach gal, 95% of gal, don't get the number. It is what it is. It is what it is. You can't, you can't let that deter you. You have to fix yourself. Someone got to say yes. That don't mean that you leave your yard and devout your day to move into gal or whatever. But don't, don't worry about what happened with the last girl. Worry about this girl. What about this opportunity? I've got two girlfriends out of approaching gal on road. Well, one of them weren't a proper girlfriend, but whatever. Innit? If man didn't approach them girls on road because, oh, the last girl rejected me. I would never have got those girls' numbers or whatever. I don't, I don't forget about her. I don't remember her. What, Chantel? Man, I don't even remember her, innit? I'm on this one here, innit? I want to see what this girl's saying, innit? I can't let what happened with that girl over there affect my confidence with this girl. Forget it even happened. Any man tell you, oh, they ain't been rejected or they ain't been dissed or aired by much girls or whatever, it's because they ain't approached much girls. Most girls, you could go up to 10 girls in one day. You probably get three numbers, and out of those three, you probably might, you get me, go all the way with one of them. It's the game, isn't it? It's the game. It's the game, it's the game, it's the game. It's the game. But you know what? Can go through rejection as well, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of girls. <laughs> yeah. They go out, yeah, and they meet man, and man just use them and dump them and dash them to the side of the road. Yeah, don't think it's just man them that go through rejection and that. You're not going to be everyone's first choice. Even my girl. I'm on her first choice. I, at the time, yeah, okay, cool. She was chatting to someone anyway. So, man spoke to her and then get me, she's like, oh. Oh, you're not tall enough or whatever, innit? That's what she said, innit? But she was talking to someone else. That's cool, innit? Now, man owns that girl's fucking soul, blood. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to be everyone's first choice. There's a lot of girls out here, like, they might see man and think, yeah, whatever, innit? But they ain't met, man. They ain't met, man. My girl... She didn't know me from Adam. Yeah, he's just another guy. This is on the internet. So it's not like I approached her or whatever on the road. This is on the internet. This is on fucking dating apps and that. Yeah, she dismissed, man. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. But when she actually finally met up with man, she was like, ah, oh, this is what man's been, this is what I've been missing out on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might not be everyone's first choice. It's cool. It's cool. Even this job that man's at. You know the testing job man's doing? They phoned me up about this job, the recruitment agency, and I was putting it off, putting it off, putting it off for months, you know. Then eventually they caught me like, oh, what are you saying, man? You've got this job or whatever. And I said, all right, then cool. Man's joined the team. Quit after a fucking day. Yeah, quit after one day. The manager and the coordinator phoned me up, phoned me back. Oh, no, man, we really want you to stay in rare, 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 and I dismissed the job. I weren't interested in the job. This turned out to be one of the best fucking jobs that I've ever had. But again, it weren't my first choice. I was like, how oh, I fuck this job and that. I've been for job interviews before. Didn't get the job and that. The car man thought, ah, oh, he might not be that good. <laughs> Ask the company that man worked for right now. Yeah, the contract's dead. The contract died. They wanted to keep me on and put me in other places just to keep me there. You know why? Because they don't want to lose, man. They need, man, to come back in April. Probably am top two best workers they've ever had. Like, to the point where the tenants write and give reports about me. Oh, yeah, that guy is fucking good. Friendly and rare, rare, rare. And, uh, yeah. 
Imagine that. Imagine the job that I dismissed after one day actually turned out to be one of the best fucking jobs that I've ever had. So remember, at certain points in my life, I haven't been someone's first choice. Like with my gang, she's talked to someone else. All right, cool. I was getting in between that and then, oh, you're five foot nine or whatever, isn't it? <laughs> not, not good enough for me. Whatever, whatever, isn't it? Um, at certain points in my life, I ain't been someone's first choice. But then when they actually got to meet man and find out, like, oh, this guy is actually a catch. Similarly, likewise, on the other end of the spectrum, I've dismissed jobs and now nah, and I fucked that job. It's an idiot thing or whatever, isn't it? Yeah? And I'm thinking, now, nah, I was wrong. I was wrong. It's turned out to be one of the best jobs man's ever had. Kushti. Flexible. Man can book appointments with tenants. Oh, I can't come this time. But can I come that time? Oh, that's a bit late for me. Can I come earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I almost just threw it away just like that. Yeah, man. You might not always be someone's first choice. And you might actually dismiss something and find out, rah. You know, you've actually made a mistake. Man made a mistake with his job. And to end it, because I said, man's going around different scenarios, different topics and that. Man always be someone's first choice and that. And some people get rejected. And sometimes, like man said earlier with the football thing, some of the rejectors regret rejecting certain people, aren't they? Now, this is on the road, isn't it? This is a road situation now, isn't it? Yeah, so, like, my cousin's from Wood Green, isn't it? N22, Greenside, isn't it? Um, yeah, them Wood Green man used to be like man's allies and that like, back in the day when I was on the road, didn't it? So anyway, my cousin's like a year younger than me, isn't it? She's like 27, turning 28. But one of the young G's in his area, he's not around no more anyway. Like, he, yeah, he got shot and he died. But beforehand, my mum was really about this thing, you know. But before that, if any of you don't know about the beef in North London and that on the roads, you will know that Tottenham Utes and Wood Green Utes, ah, 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 nah, they can't be in the same place without someone getting mashed up in it. So there's one you, RIP Lamps, in it. He wanted to join one of the Tottenham sides, in it. I mean, to join the MPK use. I mean, they're from Tottenham, innit? And they told him, no. No, no, you can't join the man. I mean, but they probably call him dickhead. You can't join the man, then, innit? So he said, all right, cool, cool, cool. So I can't join you, man. Yeah, you man are Tottenham, man, MPK, man, innit? Can't join you, man. Cool. I'm going to go over to the other side where I'm accepted. Woodside, yeah? Greenside, yeah? Cool. You know... So Tottenham Mutes rejecting him, he's gone over to start repping the Wood Green Mutes. You know after that rejection, that you mashed up pretty much everyone in fucking Tottenham blood. Wood Green's top scorer. The man there was wishing he joined their side. Trust me, that you was a fucking problem on the road. And the man they rejected him. The man they rejected him. They made a fatal mistake. Trust me. Man, I ain't even going to talk too much, but trust me. Yeah, just type in man's name, Lamps. Yeah. It's a problem on the fucking road for them Tottenham boys. And then man, they dismissed him and rejected him. I, I bet you they wished that they, they, they had him on his team. Again, you know it's going to be someone's first choice. You know it's going to be someone's first choice. Yeah. That's it, man. Rejection, L's, losses, and not being someone's first choice. It's a part of life, man. You're not going to succeed at everything you try. Not everyone is meant to like you. That's it, man. That's it, that's it, that's it, man. That's why I, I don't mind. I don't fear failure. Yeah, I don't fear failure. I don't go in there hoping to fail, but I, I expect expect all right cool i could fail like this man still gone and tried like i said with the gal 
Someone got to say yes. And i got to succeed at something. So I'm going to keep throwing my darts and hoping that I hit bullseye. Stay wise. Tunnel.